What I have here is my uh, Les Paul that I just have uh, modified to have the pickups uh, being out of phase when they're in the middle position. That is to get that um, Peter Green uh, tone that he was famous for. Um, of course, it's not just about the pickups, it's uh, what he managed to do with his fingers to create the tone and also the amps and the guitar that he used. But um, this is as close as I can get, I guess. Um, this Les Paul is, um, who will be the star of this episode, is my uh, Made in Japan Les Paul. It's a here by, see it here. And the model of this is LS700. Yeah. And in this there are some uh, Maxon uh, PAF clones of the pickups. They are the original stock pickups for this guitar. Uh, and um, so I, what I've done now, I've just uh, modified the neck pickup, uh, flipped the magnet so it's out of phase when it's in the middle position. So I'm down into the details now. So I have this uh, pickup. Uh, and um, the numbers in black indicates to me that it is an original Japanese pickup and it, it looks like uh, Maxon from the things that I've seen online on other kind of pickups. So they are a bit, um, they sound a bit hotter to me than, than regular Classic 57 or they bring the guitar more easily into uh, uh, crunch tone so I, I really like them so I'm, I'm, I'm a bit scared to, um, to damage the pickup but uh, I think I, I'll go ahead and, and do this mod um, fingers crossed so what I have to do is to desole the two points here on the pickup cover to, um, to get the pickup free from the cover and then I had to loosen some screws here um, and uh, yeah the bottom screws, there are four screws on the bottom and these uh, pole piece screws also I guess uh, have to be loosened to, to make the, to free the magnet. So that's what I'll do now, I'll try to desolder the, these things first and then um, get into the details of the pickups. Okay, so far so good. Pickoff cover is off. Um, then I see um, the magnet is right there. But I need to loosen the pole piece screws and I need to loosen four screws on the back side of the base plate there. If you see the Greeny, the Peter Green uh, guitar, um, his Les Paul ha had this pickup flip the other way. Now, uh, I, I really don't think that has something to do with the sound at all. Uh, it's just by accident it was flipped. Um, because I've tried that before <laughs> and, and uh, learned that the, 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 the out of phase sound won't happen like that. So, so you have to flip the magnet. All right, so I managed to uh, loosen all these screws, um, the, it's the pole piece screws, and they need to be uh, clear out of the back plate. So the, they can't be connected to the back plate because then they are holding tight uh, the, the bobbins and uh, the back plate so, so the magnet won't uh, run freely. So I also loosened these just barely so they will um, make enough room for it to, to move freely. So I managed to, um, to get the magnet out free. So here it is. So what I need to do now is to take it out. I can flip it either just around like that or, or just turn it. Uh, 180 degrees. So that's what I'm going to do. Take it out like that and I'm going to flip it like that and put it straight back. If I can make it fit. There it goes. Okay. So we should be good and uh, I'll uh, tighten up the screws 
won't bore you with that and um, resole the, the pickup cover and uh, hopefully there will be sound still. All right, let's get down to it. So this is uh, now the guitar with uh, in the middle position and uh, you can hear that it is out of phase now. Uh, and it is very um, uh, reliant on how the volume uh, controls uh, are blended uh, for the two pickups. So if I um, turn down the, the, the neck pickup, and I turn it a bit more up, And it starts to get more into that out of phase sound. I can turn down the bridge volume. So it starts to sound more normal again, but once they get blended, um, It starts to get out of phase. So, um, you can get um, the, the blend that you prefer to blend it to taste. Uh, the guitar else is uh, quite uh, like it used to be. If we listen to just the bridge pickup, the bridge pickup. Quite normal. And the neck pickup. So by themselves they are quite as normal. And the middle position when the volumes are fully up. So you hear the out of phase uh, tone. It's quite nice.
Yeah, I thought I'd um, play a few of the licks that I just played in the jam uh, from the song um, Watch Out. Um, and um, Peter Green uses some of his favorite uh, licks on that song. And one, uh, this goes in the key of A. And the one uh, lick that he uses often that is You can play it at uh, different positions. So on the E string he plays the root, the A, A note, and then on the B string he plays an F sharp. And on the G string he plays a C note. And on the D string he plays the root again, the A note. So it will sound like that. And you can also do it up here. And he plays it a bit faster, like... So the next uh, lick is uh, one that he plays up here, and it goes like this. Sometimes he uses this uh, to send it off, and then sometimes he doesn't, it just goes straight up to it. And you can use this uh, E. to start it off. But um, what he does up here is in the 13th fret, he drags it on the B string from a C note up to a D note. So he drags it uh, from the 13th fret. And the next note will be a C sharp. But then, then it goes down one fret to the 12th fret and it drags it from, uh, from the B up to the C sharp, so it and then he ends on the root, the A. So it goes. And as I said, you can start if you like on the E. It's on the G string here. That will be on the ninth fret, and you go up to the thirteenth fret. Thirteenth fret, twelfth fret, and the tenth fret. And he also uses his vibrato and he stops the no note quite fast, doesn't let, let it uh, sustain too long. So he has this vibrato, fast vibrato at the end. And often when he closes that lick, he does it with uh, something like that. And he also might do... So that will be... So, so uh, the last part is on the 11th fret on the G string. And as, um, what is that, as F sharp to the root on the B string. And then he goes up to the 12th fret on the B and back again. So, so it will be. So if we take the Watch Out song, he will start it with So that will be him. And then we could go There's one more lick, and that is that he uses this a lot. And I'm not sure if he plays it here or if he does it here. It sounds more um, in the flow when you do it like this than this. And it's easier to do it here with a pick.
war. And what that is, is uh, he starts on a G string on a D note. In the seventh fret on the G string. And then he goes, if we play it in this position, he goes to the B string on the fifth fret, E. So it's a D, E, back to the D again. And then he plays a C on the G string, uh, fifth fret, and ends on the root in the, on a D string, seventh fret. It's a bit complicated to follow all this, but if you use your ear and you, you do it, I'll do it a bit slow. Or here. And then he plays it more like. Yeah, so there you go. Um, just uh, use your ears and, and uh, try to listen to what he plays and that's often the best approach to, to find out the licks. But um, maybe this will get you started. Have fun. <laughs>